Okay, so this is my director's commentary and evaluation for my film. I'm going to be going through not every single shot, but for the um, special shots that I feel like need to be talked about and that I can evaluate on. Okay, so first of all, we have this sort of back depth shot. I thought this would be quite interesting and cool to do because I thought it would give the idea of that, oh, okay, we're in someone else's perspective now. Obviously, we see this once we pan round to our uh, anti-tagonist, we'll call her Helena, um, but I thought it would be a cool try on sort of a depth phase to see what it would be like if from going from, say, an ordinary person on the street to, oh, someone hiding away around a corner. If I could change anything about this, I would maybe try it with my gimbal, um, try and play with the focus a bit whilst panning round and focusing on the guys from through the bushes. Um, again, if I ever get a chance to try this again, I will do so. Okay, so next we have this establishing shot of one of our uh, travellers, we'll call them. Um, this shot I felt would be interesting because it kind of could use it as a callback as I do later on in the dream sequence. Um, and it also establishes that he is, of course, currently resting and waiting for the other guy to go get food, as he stated. Um, and then after that, of course, we move on to the scene where Helena is now standing behind him. And I wanted to give off this fact of that she is coming out of nowhere, hence why she is suddenly just jumping in and out of scenes. Um, I thought this was a good sort of establishment of, oh, okay, she's this big sort of baddie that's coming out of nowhere and can disappear without a trace. Like I said, mentioning with her disappearing without a trace, as you see in this next scene, um, again, I thought this would be a good idea of like, oh, okay, hang on. He's, she's, he's, she's blown stuff in his face, now she's gone. There's clearly some sort of magic going on, which would again help me establish my sort of fantasy -ish genre, besides the outfits, you've now got essences of um, things going on in the world with abilities people can have. And again, we come back to that clip and that scene of our journey and traveller, if you will, sitting in that same place, as I thought that would work for like, hang on, he's seeing himself in a different perspective. Um, again, if I could change anything, maybe he's a bit more gone, maybe I could change the lighting a bit. Um, again, as I said in my pre-production stuff, my editing isn't my forte, but still I think the establishing shot works in my favour. And then after that we come to this uh, view with the fish eye bowl. I thought this would work, as I stated again in my production log, that the GoPro POV stuff didn't work. Um, if that did work, you would have seen like hands crawling through the dirt and it would be a bit more stumbly and you'd be able to hear the breath a bit more. But I still think this fish eye gave a good idea of, okay, this is his perspective, it's weird, things are a bit blurred here as you are in the dreamscape. And then we come to this next scene where you can see our character's hands, where he suddenly flashed and thrust into what was himself seeing himself on that log. Now he's in that perspective. If I could change anything, maybe play around with the focus a bit, maybe a further back lens so you get more of a wider look around the forest itself. Um, and maybe a different locale, because I know in the next scene it, it kind of does jump to a completely different place between where our traveller and Helena is. Um, but again, this log was set out nicely so that it could be sat on, whereas where I was filming for her scene, there wasn't really anything behind her. And then we have this whip pan, which um, again I thought would work for a general attack or a bit of sort of, a, not a full action sequence, but something of the small minded stuff. Um, obviously, I think it worked quite well. If I could change anything, again, location and lighting, but for where we were, we didn't have much space to work with. 
um, and again, as I stated in my previous uh, pre-production stuff, where Helena was just standing, the other um, hut was set up, but again, that unfortunately got knocked down. If that hadn't been knocked down, I would have filmed further along on that path, but as like I said, because it got knocked down, I had to do it where I had it shot. And then we have this back and forth between our two travellers. I felt this would work for, again, sort of a POV shot, but not quite. You get that sense that you're in the conversation with them. And then you get this bit where he turns around and then Helena's suddenly not there again, showing the magic and sort of the trickery that everyone has. And then coming back into the dreamscape, he turns around and suddenly his friend's not there. And I thought this would be a good, again, establishment of, oh, okay, everything's not fully right and things are a bit weird here. If I could do anything different, again, same thing with the different locations, but again, due to what people had been doing with the environment, I can't really help that. And then we get to this bit with the Snorri cam. Now, I think this went almost quite well. I wish I would have directed my actor a bit differently so that he doesn't constantly look directly into the camera um, and maybe a bit stumbly and eventually get him to sit down on the log when he does so in a minute. But I feel it was still effective because he shows, okay, there's something really isn't going right right now and he's just a bit panicky. Things aren't really going well for him. But then again, like I say, I wish I could have got him sitting down on the log. But again, I had to cut footage because he did pause on his way there. And then we have the Dutch tilt, which I think, which establishes that something is there watching him and things were a bit intense right now. And then again, you know that something is there when he does look up towards the camera and then Helena appears pointing the knife towards her. And this gives you, the viewer, the sort of vision that he's again having. And then you have the tracking shot of him falling over. Um, again, I think this was effective to show you're following with him. I think it was just an effective feeling to have when you're in a dream, like you're floating, so you're following everything that's going on. You can move a bit differently than what you normally do. 